Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today for a patented Com C rummage video. So I'm gonna take a look at the stack of cards you see in front of you. Same deal as always, these came in from ComC.com over the last, uh, boy, it could be anywhere from six months ago to a few years ago, because it, sometimes it takes me a while to, uh, to get to these and grab them out of the Com C box and file them away into the collection, but I uh, have a really cool one to lead off with today. We'll just get right into it. Uh, you probably may have seen this on the top of the stack. It's a tobacco card. I think this is from uh, maybe the 1930s. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but check this one out. It's from the uh, Park Drive Cigarettes from uh, Gallagher Limited, a uh, set that they made for the Navy. It was a 48 card set, uh, but what I thought was great about it this one in particular features deck hockey. So this is, uh, I guess, the way that uh, sailors would keep themselves occupied back in the day. Kind of looks like a uh, combination of floor hockey and field hockey, maybe. Uh, but I just thought this was fantastic. I don't even recall how this came up. Uh, I was doing some kind of a search, uh, I guess, and uh, maybe just for hockey or something and came across that. And I just thought it was too cool. Uh, after playing ice hockey growing up, and getting through college, getting a job and, and buying a home, kind of looking for ways to stay in shape. I did play in a men's floor hockey league uh, for maybe two or three years a little while back in Connecticut, and it was just fantastic. They kept stats and they had a website and everything. So uh, when I saw that floor hockey, and of course I played a lot of street hockey growing up as well. So just thought that was an awesome tobacco card and uh, scooped that up for like a dollar. Just a nice random addition. Uh, here is a parallel that I grabbed. Buster Posey, the recently retired Buster Posey. Uh, this is the Artist Proof Parallel from Diamond Kings. And uh, got this because with the catcher's gear, it's really not that noticeable that this is an unlicensed card. Uh, the chest protector goes a long way towards making uh, Panini cards tolerable to me. And uh, in this particular set, it's a little tough to make out, but the Artist Proofs were numbered out of 99. So pretty cool posy there, numbered to less than 100 with a really nice painting. So I thought that was a nice one to scoop up. I'm not really like a huge posy collector or anything like that, but love the artwork and uh, couldn't pass that one up. I'm a sucker for serial numbering. What can I say? Uh, here's one that I never owned as a kid, but always kind of wanted to own. And it's a uh, scorecard. And it's one of the few cards that shows a photograph of Reggie Jackson during his very brief Baltimore Orioles tenure. So very, very cool. Uh, he famously did not have like a base tops card with the Orioles uh, in the 70s. And so this score release that came along the following decade uh, at least shows him in the uniform. And uh, I've seen this one talked about like probably a dozen times over the years on uh, blogs and videos and things like that. And never had a copy myself until uh, tracking that one down. So that's a nice addition there. Uh, here's a Topps Chrome Refractor. This is uh, something you've seen quite a bit of on the channel recently, uh, but did grab a lot of the 2013 Red Sox uh, Chrome iterations just because that was a World Series championship season for them that year. And this is the Sepia Mike Napoli with a normal size beard here. The beard got, you know, way out of hand by the time they won that World Series. Um, but back in 2013, the Sepias were numbered out of 75, so couple serial numbered cards already in today's video. Going from that right into some vintage here. Uh, 1964 tops, Bob Tillman for the Red Sox. Look, look how beautiful that card is. Um, just gorgeous, vibrant color, good centering. Uh, this was like 75 cents. Um, I just, it's sort of inexcusable that I haven't completed the Red Sox team sets from the 60s when you're able to get cards that look this nice at uh, those type of prices. Uh, but I'm one card closer to a 64 team set anyway with this one in hand. And we'll put that one up in the background just because that's just a gorgeous card. So love it. I uh, got a hockey card here, but this is a vintage hockey card from the WHA. So I'll try to keep this brief, but hockey, uh, non-hockey fans may not know this, but in the early 70s, a rival league developed to try to compete against the NHL called the WHA, the World Hockey Association. And they they sort of lured a few stars away from the NHL, signed them to big dollar contracts and launched their own league. And it lasted throughout the 70s before ultimately collapsing at the end of the decade. Only four franchises survived and moved into the NHL. 
uh, when the WHA folded up shop. But they did have WHA cards from Opeechee for quite a few years during the league's existence. And this one here is from the 1976 Opeechee w WHA set. It features Dennis Sobchuk of the Stingers, the Cincinnati Stingers. So there is a hockey team name that you don't see every day. How about that logo? I love the uh, the letter C that turns into the B as it uh, curls around there. That is that is killer. Um, I'd one day aspire to complete all of the WHA OPG hockey sets. Definitely not there yet and uh, may be a while, but that single was out there and it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it was like a dollar, so snatch that one up. Can't go wrong with a Cincinnati Stingers card. Uh, here's a Red Sox card from... Honestly, from the era when I was just grabbing serial numbered parallels of Red Sox that were cheap, Koji Uehara. A very good arm for Boston. Say Bowman Green, numbered out of 150. Not a card that I'm really that attracted to anymore, but did not break the bank on it either. There's a canvas Leon Dreisaitl. Another really solid season for Leon. And of course, he and uh, McDavid did see the Oilers at least past one round of the playoffs this year, which was a success and... Uh, he just had a tremendous individual season. So scooping up these canvas inserts because they're like under 50 cents on Comp C. Got uh, what I'm assuming will be the lone Star Wars card of today's video. It's from the 2020 On Demand 3D set, which I've actually opened a couple packs of now on the channel, but it's the General Grievous card. So this is from the uh, kind of less popular uh, initial trilogy. Uh, that came out later, um, I think in the early two th late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, General Grievous, I think, specifically was in maybe like episode two or three. Um, but a neat card there. And the only reason I grabbed this, honestly, is because I'm trying to complete the entire 100-card 3D set and didn't have that one. And it was uh, less than $2 for the single, which is, uh, they're, they're sneaky tough. So uh, here is a Opeechee Rainbow Color Wheel Parallel. I've shown these before. I think I've shown the Patrick Kane from this set. This is, I believe, the 2018 uh, OPG Platinum. Yes, it is. 2018-19. These are Com C exclusives through EPAC. And uh, they just look beautiful. So there's another dry cycle. Two dry cycles in today's uh, video. Did not intend that, but it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, here's another hockey card. Man, you're probably getting sick of hearing me talk about this set, but I love the only standalone Panini Prism hockey set that was ever produced back in 2013. And I have here a gorgeous green prism of Jamie Ben of the Dallas Stars. Ben is a very solid player. Look at the etching through that sweater. Look at the Dallas, the assistant captain, the, the star on the shoulder, the patch there, right through the helmet. I mean, whew, Panini prism, when they, when they do the etching right, it just can't be beat. And uh, I think this looks fantastic in green, being a Stars card, so... You know, just the latest of the many, many, many Prism parallels I have in my collection from that one release. Uh, here's probably the only basketball card in today's post, or episode, I should say. Mike Davis of the Buffalo Braves. And I don't know anything about Mike. I'll be, I'll be brutally honest. Maybe if you know anything interesting, let me know below. But pick this up just because I'm foolishly, slowly accumulating the entire 71-72 Topps basketball set. Uh, when I can find them cheap and uh, looking nice. And that was the case for that one. So there you have it. Uh, two more Red Sox here. Or it looks like three three Red Sox in a row. And these all uh, have a theme of shiny refractor type cards. From Topps Finest, one of the best closers in the business when he was on his game, Mr. Craig Kimbrell. This is the blue out of 150. And it's actually the very last blue off the print line. Number 150 of 150. Craig Kimbrell. So uh, love me, finest refractors or chrome refractors, you name it. Uh, speaking of which, here's the Topps Chrome Refractor of Daisuke Matsuzaka. No etching here, but this does come from an era where the player was still refractor as well as the background. So you do get some nice shine on the Boston jersey there and Daisuke's cap. Um, really, really nice blue refractor out of 2009 Topps Chrome in 2009 was a beautifully designed set, in my opinion. I, I really, really loved it. Uh, this is numbered out of 199 in the lower left there, so nice uh, dice gay. Getting towards the end here, just a few cards to go, but uh, to go along with dice gay, a player who was on the team at the same time as him and signed around the same time, a uh, guy that I've spoke about a few times because he had an amazing arm out of the bullpen, 
Hideki Okajima. And this is a, it's from Chrome, but it's like a throwback to the 1960 Topps rookie cards, um, which are really, really nice looking. Um, this is a result of him being an all-star rookie pitcher in 2007. You can see on the right. Um, and this is, looks like a coppery kind of color. I think it's either a gold or a copper. And uh, as such, it is numbered out of 100. So just racking up the serial numbered Red Sox cards in uh, today's video. Got five cards left here. So this is a little bit bigger rummage than normal. So just hang with me. Uh, one hockey, and then we'll finish it out with four baseball. The hockey one is a rare one. I've talked about these before, but back in 2010, in the Upper Deck French release, they did buybacks of the very first Upper Deck hockey set from 1990. Um, and you can tell there's a big giant 20th anniversary silver buyback stamp on these. They're not serial numbered, these 2010s, um, but most collectors believe there are, uh, or who have done the math on these or tried to figure it out, myself included, uh, believe there to be like maybe a dozen or two of these, uh, of each of these. Uh, and I'm not sure if they were printed or distributed evenly, but I mean, suffice it to say, these are almost impossible uh, to locate of uh, specific players. So I grab up the Hartford Whalers uh, anytime I can see them. Quite honestly, I'll buy any of these at the right price, but uh, Whalers I am particularly interested in, having been a pretty hardcore Hartford Whalers collector, and uh, snatched up this Randy Cunnyworth. So that's, honestly, you wouldn't guess it, but that's maybe my favorite card in today's video, just because of uh, the amount of time that it takes to track those down and just knowing uh, over the years how difficult they are. Uh, I'm just really pumped about that one. Uh, two oversized uh, vintage cards here uh, before we move on to two modern cards to end it. For my 55 tops set build, Mr. Gus Triandos, the Baltimore Orioles. That is pretty awesome there. Love the catcher's uh, pose. Love the Orioles logo here in the upper corner. Nice portrait. And again, this is really the condition that I look for in my 55 top set build. This is card number 64. Nice clean back as well. So a nice Orioles card there. And uh, the other vintage one that I have is also going into a set build. Uh, one that I'm probably the most excited about out of all the 50s cards that are out there, 1953 tops. Picked up this Ted Gray with the Detroit Tigers. And uh, the star of this one is probably that really detailed background here. You've got uh, the stands, some advertising. Looks like a building with a smokestack across the street. Some bleachers here over his other shoulder. So just love the artwork. Uh, 53 tops, just absolutely rules. Mentioned it um, in a couple videos of late, I feel like, but also has one of the best designed card backs of all time. And uh, for those of you who had a hard time reading the names on 2021 Topps flagship, uh, sorting your cards back in 1953 was nice and bold and huge number there. And Topps made it very, very easy on uh, collectors back then. So there's my cheap Ted Gray. That was like $2.20 or something like that. And then I've got two shiny cards to end it. The first one was, uh, or both of these are parallels that only existed for one year uh, in 2013. I've shown a few of these before, but Topps did these Silver Slate Blue Sparkle parallels. I forget exactly what the gimmick was, but essentially they were mail-in parallels of some sort. Uh, but anyway, I've been working on a Red Sox team set of these and uh, did not have this Jackie Bradley Jr. rookie card prior to uh, picking this one up. And just, I mean, that is amazing. He's definitely one of the premier... Uh, fielding outfielders of his day. I mean, the guy was just amazing with his glove. He's still playing, obviously, um, and, and still doing good things in the outfield. But in his heyday, you know, throughout the you know latter half of the 2010s, he was just uh, an unstoppable force in the outfield for the Red Sox. He's, of course, back with the team now after a, a brief stint away, and uh, really happy to have that rookie card towards that team set. We'll go ahead and put that one up, and then we'll close it out with a sneaky good parallel here. I've uh, actually talked about this one just recently, this set. But this is a diamond or a platinum diamond anniversary parallel from 2011, best parallels of the decade, along with the cognacs that came out. But in this case, we have Prince Albert, the Albert Pujols 2011 platinum diamond anniversary parallel. Um, I feel like I got one of the last cheap copies of this that'll ever go for that price unless someone finds a you know, sneaky deal and a discount bin at a show or something, but online people have kind of woken up to these 
and uh, I paid like $3.50 for this and I wouldn't be surprised. I think I saw a PSA 9 of one of these go for like 100 bucks or more recently. Um, just really, really awesome cards. Uh, some of my favorite parallels of the 2010s and uh, awesome to have the Pujols to go along uh, with that kind of set accumulation. I'll, I'll never try to collect all of these, but I do try to get superstars, Hall of Famers, and the retired legends. And uh, yeah, Pujols is uh, about as good as it gets from, uh, from this era. So beautiful one there to close it out. And that's a wrap on today's Com C Rummage. Went over 15 minutes, but definitely covered quite a variety of cards across multiple sports, multiple eras, and even got some deck hockey in there. So thank you so much for stopping by, spending some of your valuable time listening to me chat about baseball cards. And I will certainly be back in the very near future with uh, more sports card content. Until then, enjoy the hobby, everybody.